to the Land Ranger. Uh, yeah, sorry I missed the video post on Sunday. It's been a it's been a long week. So, um, 4PX uh, shipping company in China had this SDR, the uh, the B210 clone that I was talking about in our first episode. Uh, they were shipping it to the U.S. of course, and I thought it would you know immediately go straight to USPS, uh, the United States Postal Service. No, it did not. Instead, it went to another third-party shipper once it hit U.S. grounds, and then went from there to USPS. So I didn't receive this on Saturdays to make the video on Sunday. Um, but I did work on this, uh, some of the configuration. You know, I did work on the ENB. Uh, I worked on creating my eSIM profile, because we are using eSIM. I might very well be the, the first person to uh, use the eSIM profile on the, on the 14. I've seen some articles with 13 Pro and uh, using, you know, various eSIMs, but this might be the first one. Of course, I will be using uh, 5G next. I'm going to try 5G on this SDR. I'm not doing 5G right now, uh, Some, and not until I can get a better antenna. I, I tried a cradle point antenna, and it didn't help that much, so I, I'm just going to have to get better antennas. But uh, uh, anyway, long story short, I never got the item on Saturday. When I did get the item, I spent an insane amount of time looking at schematics, looking at data sheets, looking at Chinese websites to try and find anything that could get this device working. Since it's using an Arctic uh, 7 FPGA, it is not compatible with UHD FPGA firmwares out of the box. So I had to compile uh, some and they were broken, uh, contacted a few people, tried to get it working, um, ended up finding a way that I could fix it. So I compiled them and I do plan to push them onto uh, GitHub somewhere. And uh, of course the seller even also provided some shortly after I fixed the, the ones that I was originally using. So yeah, all fun games. Um, ultimately the hardest part of this entire process was the uh, SDR which is the B210 clone, and why? I don't know. Uh, setting up Open5GS was easy, like the MME config, the UPF, the uh, AMF, like none of that took as much time as trying to get this FPGA to work. So it's working. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip on my camera now um, and show everyone kind of what uh, we got here. Now, I'm not gonna show a configuration video um, there's no reason for me to do a configuration video tonight. I've been up since 3 a.m. working on this FPGA, and then, of course, I had my day job, so I couldn't work on it as much. That's why I got up early, so I could work on it. And, um, I'm exhausted, so we're just going to show a proof of concept, and then this coming Sunday, we'll do a complete configuration video in Open 5GS Core. Um, so, uh, if you could see my screen and my camera, so on my screen, we've got the uh, subscriber information, of course we got the K, uh, the OPC, service is granted. Right now, the APN uh, is internet with just IPv4. This is uh, NATed behind a FortiGate 70F. Um, and of course, uh, you can also see this is the SDR. And um, like I said, I've tried uh, Cradle point antennas, it's not that great. I'm not going to do 5G right now. I'm just doing band uh, 13, which is 751 megahertz for the DL. Um, I don't want to stick on this band. I've been trying CBRS. I got CBRS working, but um, I prefer to just kind of go to LTE when I can. Um, or, sorry, 5G when I can. So right now we're just doing this until I can get some better antenna. Um, so let me show you the setup. There is our core. Uh, this is plugged into an Extreme X435, which is then, uh, there's some routing going on on an Extreme VOS switch in SPBM fabric. So, um, everything is kind of set up simplistic on the core itself. I mean, it's just a basic open 5GS installation. Uh, so let's look at the UE. So this is a COTS UE. Um, COTS is uh, uh, commercial off the shelf, of course. And uh, this is my personal iPhone. So right now it does have a Verizon SIM. Um, and it's, you know, not getting a signal at all 
on the uh, uh, other SIM cards. So as you can see, the TRXA and the TR or the RXA is actually not broadcasting at all right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the E and B. Ah, where is the E and B at? Oh, goodness. Uh, it's been a long day, everyone. Sorry. All right. So my phone is actually showing SOS only still. We're loading the FPGA image right now. And as you can see, the SDR is uh, showing two LEDs. And we have a user 0x46 is connected. So that's our UE. Um, and I have full bars. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off my Wi-Fi and still have full bars there. So let's take a look at what we got here. Let me see if I can set my camera up to kind of be a little better because this is awful. Let me move it this way maybe. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's better. I like that. Me and my, get my arm in here. All right. Uh, so the phone is connected to Lane's LTE, so that's my SIM card. Uh, yes, this is an eSIM. Um, it's pretty sweet. So I did this with Simlessly, shout out to you guys. Fantastic service. This is super easy to build an eSIM, uh, generated AC, straight from a PLTE profile. Like, I cannot complain at all. I'm actually planning on paying just to have uh, you guys keep that open to the public. Um, but yeah, we're connected. So let's uh, do a little speed test. It's very slow. <laughs> um, there's some issues, need some fine tuning. Honestly, I would probably get better uh, performance if I had much better antenna and uh, a GPS uh, source, which I don't have. Um, I actually had issues getting the phone to do L or, uh, 5G because of the GPS issue or the GPS problem, but, um, yep. So I do have internet. Um, so to prove that I have internet, I could just click source code here, which should take me to GitHub. And then I can go to liveryspeed.org. And of course I'm still just on LTE or lanes LTE. And then we can do another speed test here, which is uh, from the public internet. So this is the public internet speed test where I'm natted behind my ISP. And it's not much better. So now let's go look at the field test. Our uh, PLMN is 310789. Uh, so that's a... Um, uh, M -N M -C -N and M -M -M -N -N is, uh, of course, 3310789. Uh, like I said, we're on band 13 um, with the frequency 5230, uh, which is actually 751 megahertz. Um, we keep getting this error here, which would explain a, a lot of our speed issue. You're probably seeing that on the screen right now. Um, I think that's an issue with the fact that the CPU that's in the 5G core is not equipped to handle, uh, the abuse that I am putting it in right now. Uh, so <laughs> I've tried, uh, tried turning off power save features and, uh, other things, and that's just not made a difference. So I'm going to try this on better hardware and maybe see if that and a new antenna makes this better. Um, here's my cell ID. and our UL frequency. And um, here's our, and this is why the antennas are bad. Look at that, 80, negative 82, 84, and I'm literally like right next to it. Um, let me see if I can.
Come on, refresh. Oh, now you're shy. This is, this is insane. Well, sometimes field test does what it's supposed to do. There we go, negative 54 dBm. Um, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open ISH and show you that my phone can ping the UE, or not the UE, the EPC. So the EPC is 10.450.1. Um, and of course we're still on just LTE, there's no Wi-Fi signal. I am pinging 10.45.01, and as soon as I stop this uh, process on the Open 5GS core, our pings will stop. So if I just control C, the radio is now dead, and so is our pings. Um, we still have service, but there is no service, it's just dead, um, and as you can see, the T, uh, TRXA and RXA lights are off as well. So the phone is dead. Um, and it's not going to fail over to LTE or anything on Verizon because uh, I have that kind of set to not use LTE right now. So yep, the signal is gone and the LEDs are off. So I'm going to go ahead and run SRS ENB again with the same configuration. And as you can see, we do have cell service, but it's only on Verizon. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again. And you can see the FPGA get the firmware loaded onto it. And then the signal come back. Hopefully we'll get our pings back. And then just like that, there we are. Yep. Um, so just as a, as a recap, this was an insane amount of work. Um, not Open 5GS. Listen, Open 5GS community, if you're watching this, you are all fantastic. That is the most lively community that I have ever personally been in. And I've been in a lot of really interesting, cool communities um, over the years in technology, uh, mostly tech tips and, uh, you know, Nortel stuff. But this is just awesome. You all are fantastic. Um, any of the Chinese manufacturers right now that might be watching this video, uh, the SDR, the, the E210 clones, absolutely fantastic, but please compile the firmware and ship it when you ship these. Just put it on a flash drive, put it on a CD-ROM, I don't care, but just please allow the people that buy these to get the FPGA firmware so that you don't have to scramble the internet to find it. Um, the actual box itself is phenomenal the amount of horsepower that you can get from this sdr straight out of the box for just 300 dollars. i mean subs like six gigahertz i mean come on it is fantastic um but again the lack of support is i guess where you save your money at um i'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my phone now you should see the user disconnect here yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I absolutely love it. Um, again, uh, Sunday, let's go over some things Sunday. Let's get this built together. I will show everyone the configurations that I use that personally have worked for me. I've tried various things. I have already filmed a lot of the configuration. Um, I did not film the troubleshooting that I had to do with the FPGA. Uh, the Arctic 7, I simply did not have time. Um, I was merely aggravated the entire time. So um, that's not filmed. I don't think anyone is going to have a problem with that. So we'll just focus on the EPC configuration, the MME, the U, uh, a, uh, AMF, <laughs> all those things, the SIM card seamlessly, and uh, we'll go from there. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and you all have a blessed evening.